We're moving to our property in two weeks and our hand is getting forced to direct sew directly into the ground this year. So in this video, we're gonna share with you some of the things that we are gonna be growing in the month of April. And we're gonna start right now. What's going on YouTube Gardener? It's your boy Sydney and Tori from the Naked Gardener channel. In this video, we're gonna show you what plants, what we're gonna be growing once we get to our new homestead uh, for the month of April in zone 8A. Now, if you like these types of video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. It really helps our channel out. Now, we're going to start off with, of course, three categories. We got the flowers, the vegetables, and the herbs. And we're going to start off with the flowers, Mrs. Naked Gardener's favorite. So I have a hard time picking flowers whenever we're doing this because some of the flowers, a lot of the flowers that I love serve two purposes, beauty and medicinal purposes. So you're going to see some other flowers when we get to the herbs but that those are the ones that i like to use for medicinal properties as well so one of the flowers that never disappoints that we love to plant just because it's beautiful and it comes in an array of colors are the dahlias we purchase expensive dahlia seeds and we purchase dahlia seeds at big lots and they've all grown mm -hmm. they've all been beautiful um, the other flower that we love to grow because it's beautiful for me is the key lime marigold. Oh, yes. But it serves another purpose, the French marigold. The French marigolds, they kind of uh, acts as a camouflage and de uh, attracts other pests to keep them off of your uh, vegetables that you want to grow. Like your mealyworms, your aphids, especially your aphids, they uh, definitely attract that. Now, another flower I love to grow is the sunflowers. The sunflowers are just gorgeous. Um, I like to try to get the seeds. I really love to try to harvest seeds from flowers. Another flower that I love to grow is borage. Now, borage, it attracts a lot of bees. I plan on having bees. And they taste like cucumbers, um, the flowers do. A lot of people are kind of put off by them just because the uh, leaves are like- The stems. Yeah, the stems, um, they're like fuzzy. Um, but it's the flowers that I just like to pop off and eat. The other flower that is beautiful and I just love to eat it as well <laughs> is the nasturtium. Yeah, and they're beautiful in salads. Yeah, and we did a container garden to do it like a little curb appeal. And I just noticed that we had a few petals starting to grow off of the nasturtium that we did for our thrillers, fillers, and spillers a container garden. Now for me, I am a huge fan of zinnias because they attract a lot of butterflies. And now that we're going to be on a larger property to grow more flowers for Mrs. Naked Flowers Garden, uh, I'm real excited about growing these Envy Zinnias. Uh, they're basically almost like Mrs. Naked Gardener Key Lime Marigolds. These will be kind of uh, influenced with these as well. I hope they get big and luscious leaves on that. And we just actually got a freebie from Baker's Creek, a canary bird uh, Zinnia. So I'm excited about growing that and other types of varieties of Zinnias in our garden. The other thing is because we love to attract butterflies is the milkweed. Yes, and uh, this one is the swamp uh, swamp milkweed. Since we have a pond, uh, the swamp milkweed loves a moist, swampy type of terrain. Uh, so I'm going to try to plant these around the the pond there. There's only a few vegetables that I get super excited about growing this time of year. And one of those is okra. And we've mentioned, um, I've become particularly fond of the Alabama Reds and of the Star of Davids. They are just so prolific and tasting that you can almost just, well, you can just eat we, them off I, of we, the vine. Like, I eat fresh okra off the vine like he does sugar snap peas mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, and then the other things I get super excited about growing are peppers this year I was going to do some Tabasco peppers 
some habanero and pimento was another one that I wanted to grow that I haven't grown before because I'm still experimenting with stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I get really excited about tomatoes but also deflated about tomatoes because we haven't had the best success with tomatoes. But the tomatoes that do best in zone 8A have been more of the deterrent tomatoes, uh, the small um, cherry, cherry tomatoes, tomatoes, plum tomatoes, patio tomatoes, determinate small uh, tomatoes because it just gets so hot here that it doesn't allow the flowers to bloom and fall off. So what we did great with last year were the uh, purple tomatillos. Mm -hmm. And um, with the tom hats, the orange hat, micro toms as well. Um, and then I wanted to try a different one, the tomato black versus, I, I can't even pronounce it. I'll put the picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanted to do those um, because I feel like in our growing area, it's just gonna do a lot better. The other uh, vegetable that after growing it last year and being successful, um, I didn't find out soon enough. It's something that we did a little bit later mm -hmm. were the Zucchino Rampicante. Yes. I love those. Love them. Next to Zucchini, those is probably be my next favorite squash. And it's the only successful squash that we had because of all the vine borers. Yeah, we even had a vine borer in this one and it still continued to grow. Yeah, it, it, it wanted to live vine borer or no vine borer. And then um, the other squash that w I started a little bit late, but it looked like it would do something if I started it sooner, was the Honey Boat. Um, so I want to try the Honey Boat this year squash. I'm always going to <laughs> try to grow giant red mustard. Um, I love it as a lettuce supplement in any sandwich. So you can just go out, grab it. Um, it's always going to make a great fresh or saute type thing. So if you can grow giant red mustard, grow it. And then um, the tot soy. The tot soy yes. mustard is delicious. So I want to try to capitalize on this season right now before it gets too, too hot because it grows pretty quick mm -hmm. and it's like spinach. Now for the vegetables, um, we're going to talk about the ones that I'm kind of uh, favoring this year. Uh, since our, the seller of the house is talking about watermelons, we're going to try the early moonbeam watermelons that Mrs. Nick Gardner wanted to try. It's a yellow meat uh, watermelon, so it should be very, very sweet. And then uh, you also want to try the melon pear. Is it the melon pear? Tom, what's the name? Uh, Timbalo. Okay. I don't know how to pronounce it. But we're going to try to grow those. They seem very small. We might have to grow those on a, a trellis, whatnot. Then next, we'll go to my favorite vegetables of all, the sugar snap peas. Don't invite him if you have ripe sugar snap no, peas. No, you can go ahead and invite me. If you can't, if you can't can enough sugar snap peas, I'm your man. There's the King Tut uh, Purple uh peas that I grew in the apartment when I was uh, doing a project out in Georgia. Those are apartment friendly if you have room to grow up on the trellis. Uh, then you got your organ peas. Uh, then you also have bush varieties if you are in an apartment so that way you can grow those. Uh, then you have your red swan bush uh, beans. Uh, those are very uh, prolific in the containers. You can grow those in containers. You don't have to worry about doing any trellis. So you can grow those in the apartment as well. Uh, one year, I think it was our second year uh, when we tried to grow carrots. Uh, we just grew a, like a variety mix and we noticed that the purple dragon carrots, it was in that mix, was very sweet and tasty. So we're definitely going to be growing those from Baker's Creek. I look forward to being able to grow enough carrots to make my own carrot juice. Yes. We saw some reviews on these black nubula uh, carrots. Nebula. Nebula carrots, sorry. And uh, so we're interested to see how those grow, uh, grow in our area. Next is cucumbers. Uh, we might have to start off with some bush varieties, but we are still going to try to grow these cucumbers out. We got the dragon egg cucumbers. We, we almost started uh, we, last we year. We tried them. Yeah. And they started to grow, but... I forgot uh, what happened. There, it was an infestation. I had to be gone away oh, from the yeah. garden. And we had uh, the spider mite infestation. Oh, yeah. The spider mite. Oh, Ooh. the beast. 
uh the also the dar cucumbers those are another variety that we're interested in trying those look like a very good pickling uh cucumbers mm -hmm. that we can also do uh next we're going to do lettuce there's a tons of varieties of lettuce that uh there's out there right now we're in that short window uh since lettuce doesn't take that very long to grow we're gonna have to do it in shaded areas yeah we're probably doing under that tree area next to that that the pond there we got the rocky top lettuce and then we also have the paris island uh lettuce that we're interested in trying uh there's a red onion called the north holland onion that we're interested it in. it had the name holland so we're that's our name we're gonna try to grow that hopefully these are the short day varieties uh it doesn't stay on the baker creek baker creek uh packet uh short day varieties for our hemisphere where we're located at do uh, thrive very well the australian brown onion is another one that we're going to try to grow from seeds and hopefully those are our short variety onions now if there's any type of vegetable that we missed that you're growing in zone AA, comment down below. We're interested in learning of what you're growing. Maybe we can grow on our uh, future homestead. This year, I am excited to grow lion's ear. Now, some people are afraid of lion's ear. Um, it is something I personally want to grow. It's a beautiful flower. It is a medicinal herb. I intend to make some teas out of it. Um, and I'm wanting to do it really more for him. Bruh. Tease for you because I think you have high blood pressure and it is something that's supposed to lower blood pressure. Some people have um, been afraid of this one because apparently it's supposed to be like a mild narcotic or something. Um, but it's a, it's a traditional medication. It comes from Africa. It grows great in our zone. It's beautiful. It attracts hummingbirds and butterflies and bees, all the things that we want. So I'm like, I'm super psyched about that one. Um, and then uh, echinacea. Echinacea is something that we always want to grow. I always want to make teas out of that. Um, it is a medicinal herb and I plan to do more things with echinacea. So I'm excited about that one. Now, with Echinacea, with this large property that we have now, we can grow a lot of these. I plan on um, basically being a witch in the woods um, <laughs> with herbs. A sage is something that I want to grow. Now, I'm going to start off with what I have. I really want to get some white sage. I really want to do some smudge sticks. Uh, and that is something that I personally am excited about. Uh, catnip. Catnip is something... <laughs> that uh, we love, Sage loves, and our neighborhood cats love. And if we can attract some cats that keep the mice and rodents away at our new property, I'm not mad about that. Now we're in a short window of time and we can also go ahead and start some of our dill, some of our parsley, and some of our cilantro. I really like the dwarf lemon cilantro. It has a nice flavor to it. So you have to basically start that right now this week and you have a short window for it. The deal we want, we like to grow as much as possible for the caterpillars. So next we go for my favorite herbs are they're going to be the rosemary and lavender. Now those are kind of hard to grow from seeds because you have to do a stratification with these seeds and for you to allow that to happen what we normally do is allow those seed packets to be in the refrigerator for about four to six weeks uh, then when it's time to plant those that's when we take them out the refrigerator and start the seeds from there then of course we've got the lemon balm which we can incorporate as a tea and then the thyme which also kind of takes for, for a while but those once you get those growing they will stay and be a grower. They come for, back every year. Yeah. yeah. So those are our favorite herbs. If you have your favorite herb that we didn't mention, comment down below and let us know. Now, the next honorable mention is the basil plant. Those, I love growing those just for Mrs. Naked Garden because she makes some excellent homemade pesto with that. And if you had the store-bought pesto, try growing your own basil with making your own pestle from just your homegrown basil plant oh my god you would never do uh store-bought paste pesto ever again and i did share that recipe so we'll put a card above for that 
Now we asked our children to have some input on what we should have on our homestead. Our oldest son wanted some citrus plants or citrus trees. So we got the improved Meyer lemon tree that we're gonna take. Are we gonna do those in ground or just keep them in containers? Right now, them coming back from the Arctic blast is questionable so we are gonna get some more if we see some more because I'm I don't know if these ones are coming back so we're gonna keep these in containers right now if they don't do too well we'll not get some more he also wanted us to get some goats so we're definitely probably getting some we're goat. gonna devote the a Nigerian dwarf goat to him yeah and then our oldest daughter wanted some pear plants uh, or pear trees and luckily the property already has one particular pear plant so all we have to do is get another pear plant uh, and we're mostly going to be getting our fruit trees from Stark Brothers and then um, our oldest our youngest daughter didn't quite know what to get so I'm going to get her some peach uh, trees and she wanted a horse but there's no purpose for us to get a horse so she's going to be her job is going to get the egg chickens and then our son he wanted a dog and he didn't know what type of uh, tree to get uh, so i got him some figs and mrs naked gardener wanted some persimmons and of course she wanted some goats so of course we're getting those now if you like these types of video make sure you give us a thumbs up and if you want to see other videos that we do we'll put a playlist above here so that way you can follow along until the next video let's grow together